just wanted a piece of Hertz, its competitor, which was cheaper than Avis and had a better story. But the ones who run what's known again as a balanced book needed something to protect them from the downside. So when they went long Hertz, they shorted Avis. They didn't understand that they'd get wrecked if we got any good news. So when Avis reported a blowout quarter thanks to the auto shortage, the stock exploded and the shorts got to experience what it feels like to lose more than 100% of your money. Now, what matters here is what didn't matter. And that's the traditional valuation metrics that so many money managers come on air or in the papers or tell their investors is what really matters. Should Avis have added $10 billion in enterprise value due to a single quarter? No, uh, no, it shouldn't have. Uh, it, it is superficial. Should Bed Bath run like this when it recently reported some not so hot numbers? Eh, I can spin out a story about how Bye Bye Baby Division could be worth the current price of the entire company, something I tried this very morning, but Triton wouldn't take the bet. Bait. Otherwise, no, probably wasn't. Uh, but at the end of the day, these stocks are like GameStop or AMC, in that at their highs of the day, they did divorce themselves from the fundamentals. It happened. Now, maybe the better comparisons are Netflix and Amazon, which made you fortunes in the face of heavy shorting, even though their valuations were totally unjustifiable until many, many years later. Netflix and Amazon were about superior producers, whereas GameStop and AMC are simply about the mechanics of the market. I don't think anyone honestly believed these stocks deserved to trade as high as they did early last year. But the buyers took their cue from Clint Eastwood and Unforgiven. They realized that deserves got nothing to do with it. There were simply too many short sellers who had to capitulate, and their surrender sent the stocks into the stratosphere. That's what we saw in Avis yesterday and in Bed Bath this morning. Again, this is the revolution, okay? These are people who typically have not owned stocks. They come in, they buy them up, and cause the short sellers to capitulate, which is probably right here. And then the short sellers probably come back at the end of the day. But they're about to get hit again. Now, there will always be shorts that go awry. Look at this one. There were a ton of short sellers who got steamrolled at Estee Lauder just yesterday. Okay, this is what happened. First, the stock got crushed. Okay, People thought the numbers were going to be bad. And then they listened to the conference call. They realized they were on the wrong side of the tree. I agree with Jim Cramer not to short any stock, especially when it comes to meme stocks like AMC or GME. You don't want to get burned being a short seller. AMC is currently trading under $20, and I strongly believe we will have a short squeeze soon. Retail investors are buying the dip. Institutions are buying the dip. I am holding 5,000 shares, and I will keep holding. Before I go, I want to remind you I am not a financial advisor.